right, well, I'll just start by playing it through once um, as I play it, and then maybe we can all kind of work together to, to learn it or, or chord <laughs> behind. Chord behind. Yeah. an A in there at some point, A7 maybe. Um, but yeah, I and I will confess I don't read music, so I just learn by ear, um, hence the tablature. Also, it's just an easier, you know, across the board for everybody to, to you know, get into, I think. So, all right, I'm going to play through the other waltz that I was going to Okay. Teach you guys today. Um, you guys can continue to to talk. That's great. I, you know, it's kind of a maybe we can all teach each other sort of workshop today. <laughs> so what's the name of this one you play? Um, this next one is Josephine's Waltz, which is. Another, <laughs> another one. Another I don't favorite. know that one as well. But, oh, okay, great. Um, I, uh, I played on. I played on the whistle regularly. Oh, wow, that's nice. What's nice about these is if you ever go to a session, uh, your session, both yeah. of these are very popular at your session. Everybody would know them. Yeah. And they're, you know, they're, they're great standalone pieces. Josephine. So, yeah, um, maybe we can go back to Shebeg Shamor and just try to plink through it together. Um, so maybe I can play the first few phrases and then if we're all, okay, you guys are capoed up, so that's good. Yeah. just repeats that same thing again so yeah let's try that again
Do, would you like a pick? Or you're good with your fingers? Okay, cool. All right. Um, so do you want to throw in that D chord and see? So, yeah. Let, this over and see some of the chord shapes on here so I can remind myself and I'll just sing it. All right. Da -da. part from the top and we'll just go real slow. about this piece uh, is that as you play if you kind of hold your fingers in the last position um, like one of the parts that's real easy to hear it is so you have some natural chords happening just with the sustain of the notes and then it's you know so that it's one of those pieces where you don't even really have to play anything other than the melody you know, if you take it real slow and just let the instrument do the rest with those, you know, those harmonies. Um, so that's a nice one there too. Um, yeah. up a little higher so we'll go up the neck a little on this so we can try that phrase together
goes back to the refrain from the first part. And then... Yeah, so it sort of has some of those motifs coming back in for the B part. This is a Carolyn tune? I think, actually, yeah, I've heard that it's maybe his first composition. That's what I read online. Um, so, yeah, pretty impressive first composition, if that's true. Yeah, and I think it's Gaelic for Little Fairy, Big Fairy, or Little Fairy Hill. I was Little Fairy Little Hill. Mountain, Big Mountain. Oh, okay, yeah, there, I also saw that some the translation for fairy could be something like hill or a mountain so the, yeah that, little that, that mountain. was the translation that i that i was taught okay yeah that's that's probably right then <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's try the the beginning of the b part pull off there at the very end but that is up to you you can pick it as well yeah I do in the B part sometimes yeah so Shall we try the B part one more time, mm -hmm. playing together? this I do that a lot when I'm playing if I'm ending a note on or just throwing in another note right there for a nice little ending chord flourish at the end um, yeah all right So maybe uh, let's try it, try play an A part, or two A parts and two B parts through, and, and see how we do with that. All right. All right, so one, two, three, one, two.
it in that last, like the second to last measure, kind of. Right yeah, there, yeah, there yeah. yeah, I do a pull off. Oh, so, okay, okay. That's... Yeah, it does. It's, okay. It goes by quicker, yeah. <laughs> so it's just deceiving the ear a little bit. Right, yeah, just a little. Oh. Yep, yeah, right. there we go. Do you focus on bringing in uh, uh, double stops and chords on the beat on the waltz? Um, yeah, a little bit. Um, I, I haven't thought about that specifically, but I think on these waltzes, the natural sort of gate of the melody sort of lends itself to having those. Okay. Um, you know, that's where the chords sort of come in. But uh, I didn't chord. Oh yeah, sorry. It's Josephine's. Um, I didn't do any chorded notes for Josephine's. Um, but it's you know the same sort of scenario where you can sort of. I've found that you can kind of play the notes around what around the melody and sort of find those the nice easy harmonies where you don't have to give your hands too much of a workout but sometimes you know with the fifths playing the if you're on the fifth fret you can always play the the, the string below it and that always sounds good um you know and you can kind of find patterns like that in there to yeah and then with josephine's the Different people play it in different keys. So um, this is, I got the basic form of this tab off of a, a mandolin tab and then was looking at other people playing it um, and they actually play it, uh, it would be a capo two or a capo four with this same um, arrangement. So some people play it in E, some people play or with an E starting note or with an F sharp starting note, and this is a D starting note. And so, um, yeah, that's that's this one. So I'll I'll play this through one more time so we can get oriented to the melody. through the A part and then it it is technically two times through the B part but there's a second ending so I just kind of put it all okay. all um, out there in one go so we don't have to repeat the second part of the tab there. <sighs> all right so let's try the first bit of the A part
going into the B part. That's one thing I like about this tune is it just flows right into the B part. It almost was hard to figure out, okay, which note is actually the B part starting on, you know, because it's very smooth transition. So, um, yeah, let's try the, the A. Me. Oh, yeah. For counting mm -hmm. on this top line at the uh -huh. end when we're going five, two, five, four, two. Are you counting that that's being held for two, three? Is that one, two, let's three? Let's see. And then uh, another. Let's play, how, let me just uh, play through and then you kind of tell me what notes you're talking about. Okay. Oh there. yeah, so, so that's so a good you, question. So when you see the two, spa two uh, dashes, that counts as two two beats. I would say, yeah, I I kind of tried to space them out that way, but you um, it you can play it either way, really. It it works for the you know if you're playing if you're just playing on your own, that sounds just fine. So you could really do it either way. I I do two beats on that too, okay. so I go. But, but anywhere you, now so the next one, the mm -hmm. next one is at the end there. And so on where we, we come to the next, uh, uh, on the third um, string mm -hmm. and the five uh, open, and that is again, yeah. Five, open, two, three. Yeah. Is that how you Yeah, like a little pause there. Okay. Yes. If I, yeah, that's, I tried to put two dashes where there's a little bit of a sustain. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, let's try the B part. And so this one, yeah, we can take it real slow. I'm going to give the sustain of that of the last note from the A part so that the last phrase goes into the B part. part once more. Let's see. All right, I'll, I'll count us in. One, two, three, one. Try it, play the A, A part twice through and then the B part. Let's see how we do. All right. One, two, three, one.
this one I really like throwing tremolo in, especially on that high part. But you can really sprinkle it in anywhere that sounds good to you. So. Never figured out tremolo. Uh, yeah, <laughs> even I have trouble with it sometimes, although I started out on tenor banjo, so there was a lot of triplets going on. And I think that helped me out later, you know, when I was playing the slower tunes. But yeah, it's still, it's kind of hard to, to switch from, to, you know, yeah. You your pick a little bit when you do treble, don't you? Yeah, I do. I, um, and I, I, I kind of, I think I tilt my pick my, the whole time I play, just so it's at an angle to the string and it, it kind of moves over the string a little bit easier and doesn't catch as much and I find that that helps me out with tremolo you know if I if I turn it so that the you know it's the rounded end moving back and forth instead of the the hard flatness you know going back and forth so yeah all right well should does anybody have any questions or or um should we just try to go through it one more time together slow? Sure. Okay. So. at this this section down here it's it kind of to my eyes reading the tab it just all blurs <laughs> together you know because it's like okay five three two zero two three two you know but once but, you yeah, yeah it's just gonna up and down up and down yeah it does it kind of just you know floats around in that area and then floats back up and floats down low so yeah it's a really beautiful really beautiful piece 